last year I um, filmed a video sort of mid-February time um, because that's the time I tend to start sowing seeds because there's 10 hours of daylight and the video was a sort of rough guide to how you'd go about choosing which of the you know many many varieties of seed that you'd like to grow um specifically i was talking about cut flowers and not you know necessarily flowers that i would grow in my cottage garden um and it was just to give a sort of uh, some helpful tips on how you can choose from the hundreds of varieties that you find in seed catalogues um, if you go online onto um, seed websites but also if you watch um, YouTube channels of um, flower farmers um, growing cut flowers, it's also very easy to see something that they're growing and think I'd like to grow that myself. Um, and I should know because that's what I do as well. I see something that somebody else is growing and then I tend to give it a go and see how I get on with it. In a small space um, like I have, the advice really is to grow fewer varieties and grow lots of them. Um, and I'm still working on that. The reason I haven't quite got there yet is because I'm still choosing what my few varieties will be. Um, and last year, unfortunately, I can't find the video, but I did a video of what my top 10 cut flowers to grow were then. Um, and that's what I'm going to do today. I'm going to give you, if I could only grow 10, what would they be? Um, bearing in mind, though, that the 10 cut flowers that I would grow if I could only grow if I was an events florist would be very different to the 10 flowers if I could only grow, if I was growing for retail bouquet. My business is still finding its feet. Um, when it originally began, it, it was just um, to sell retail bouquets. So I didn't need to grow lots of the varieties that you would grow for events. As my business is evolving, I'm still sort of working out where I am in the market. I now provide um, florals for both retail bouquets and also event florals which in a smaller space is more difficult because it means you're growing less of more varieties, which means then if you do have an event, it can sometimes be a little bit more difficult to give it a theme that can run through the whole, the, the, the wedding venue to the reception venue because you just don't have enough quantity of stock. So what I'd like to do um, this year is trial some more varieties, which is why I've bought far too many seeds again. Um, and finally, try and nail down what my, if I could only grow 10, would be. But all I'm going to do now is tell you the 10, that if I could only grow 10 now, what would they be at the moment? And that's without trialling lots of things that I've never grown. So this is just choosing a top 10 from things that I have grown. You know, there are lots of things I'm going to grow for the first time this year. I autumn sowed some verbascum and some, I'm going to grow some Gadisha, if that's how you pronounce it. Um, and they will all be things that I've grown for the first time, which I will sow for the 2024 season. So I can't put them in my top 10 because I haven't actually cut them and used them. These things are all going to be things that I actually have cut and grown, some of it for a few years, and um, some of it maybe only for the first time last year. If I could only grow 10 for 2024, these would be the 10 that I would go for. I should say it wasn't easy narrowing it down to 10, but what I did try and do is I tried to think about if I were building um, any uh, anything with flowers, so whether it be a bouquet or um, you know a floral arrangement, I still like to put in um, the three main shapes because I think that um, gives it a finished look. So I always like to add a spire of some description, so something tall like say a snapdragon, um, something that is a filler, um, so if you imagine like a spray rose or a spray chrysanthemum, something like that, so that it, it's basically it's one stem with multiple flowers on it, um, because that can make a bouquet with fewer flowers seem much bigger, so definitely a spray. Then something that it, it gives the foliage element, so some green, um, I mean, that could be a shrub. I'm not using shrubs in my tent, but shrubs I like to use are brachyglottis, pittosporum. Lots of people grow basil, mint, things like that, that they can be the green element. Um, and then, of course, something that's an umbellifer. Um, 
So I like to I like to add those elements into all of my designs and I feel that it gives it a really complete look. Um, if you had a bouquet that's all upright things, so if you had a bouquet that was um, snapdragons and larkspur uh, um, and bells of Ireland and amaranthus, it would still look nice because it would have lots of contrast of texture and colour, but it would just be missing those elements that gave it a, a better structure around shape. Um, so in my top 10, which I have had to write down, and like I say, it wasn't easy because I love flowers. Uh, I mean, there were lots of things I grew this year um, that I loved, but I hardly ever cut from. Um, to discuss if I've pronounced that right, that was one. It was brilliant stem lengths, lovely colour, really nice, but I just found that actually, in fact, perhaps for the time of year that it flowered, the colour didn't quite fit the palette. Because I do find as you get to the second half of summer, I'm looking for more autumnal tones. And the first half, um, sort of spring, early summer, I'm looking for the more pastel tones. Um, and I think the problem with the, dis the discus was that it's very pastel. Um, and perhaps if I could have grown it in a polytunnel and had it flowering much earlier to go in spring bouquets, perhaps I would have cut from it um, more often. Um, just a few shockers that aren't on my top 10. And I suppose I just wanted to throw in why they're not, um, because they're really, really popular flowers. One thing that's not on my top 10 is sunflower. I've grown loads of fantastic varieties of sunflower in the past. One of them um, I absolutely love is Ruby Eclipse and then a lovely um, smaller variety, Vanilla Ice. I love them. I love the colour. Um, but if you're putting them into retail bouquets, because they're very flat headed, they just I need things that will sit in a bouquet and I found they didn't. Um, so it's not on my top 10, but I am going to try a different variety this year to see how I get on with it, because it says that the flowers are upward facing. Um, I can't remember. I'll write in the variety I'm going to try. Um, anyway, not on my top 10. So I thought I'd start with a few shockers. Another one that's not on there is Amy, um, which again, you know, oh, look at the birdies, starlings, I think. Um, bit of a shocker, it's not on there. The reason it's not on there is because it really is an event floral. If I were an event florist that was just doing events, it would be on there. Undoubtedly, it will be on my top 10. But that's not my main focus. My main focus still really is retail bouquets. And it, it does drop quite a lot. And, you know, customers don't necessarily like that. They take it in their house and it, it loses all its pollen all over the table. Um, so it's great. If, you're, if I were an event florist, definitely it would be on my top 10. As would Cosmos be on there. If I were an event florist, it would definitely be on there. You cannot be an event florist without Cosmos, but it's not on the top 10 because that's not my predominant focus. So I just thought I'd put those three in because obviously they are really popular flowers that I'm not putting in my top 10. And those are the reasons why. Gosh, I'm rambling, aren't I? Let's get on with what the top 10 are. Okay, number one, I honestly, I don't think I could be without it and if you, you must keep succession sowing it if you keep succession sowing it you could pretty much have it all season um, I do find that the autumn sown crop is always the best and then it's a bit shorter going on then through the summer and that can also depend on how the summer is if you're having a drought year it, it is something that likes to bolt so you need to keep it well watered, which is why the autumn ones that have obviously had all the moisture over the winter do so much better. Um, and it's Greek cress. Um, there are a few different types of cress. So I will pop the Latin on the screen for the one that I'm talking about. And honestly, I absolutely love it. It's got that real, um, sorry, excuse me. <coughs> it's got that lovely sagey green, you know, a bit like eucalyptus. So it works really well with any, you can put it pastels or warm colours um, and I really couldn't be without it. It's also really easy, okay, direct sow it, no, no fussing about, direct sow it in the autumn, direct and then keep just chucking it on your garden um, in patches you've got free th through the year and uh, you won't regret it. It also, as an extra bonus, it dries really well. I put it in so many Christmas wreaths and Christmas arrangements and things. So it, it really is absolutely fantastic. And um, I can't see that 
ever not being on my top 10, but you know, might look back in 10 years and it might not be there. Okay. Uh, the other one, I just wouldn't be without, and I know they can be a bit fussy, but I couldn't be without dahlias. I, I just couldn't be without them. Um, the only reason they're a bit fussy for me is I have to start them in pots because if I try and start them in the ground, the slugs just, just don't give them a chance. So it is a lot of work to pre-sprout them all in pots and you do need quite a lot of space. But even though that element of work, I absolutely love them. Do occasionally have a few problems with earwigs, um, but I tend to grow them on such mass that there's always some that haven't been eaten by earwigs. But I do find for cut flower production, I do tend to stick to the, the ball varieties and the pom-poms. Um, and that's because they have a better vase life. So again, for retail bouquets, they just, they tick a few more boxes. I probably am going to have to grow a few more decorative varieties this year, although I'm not 100% sure about that. In a colour palette, I don't usually grow them in, um, but this is for an event um, where they want whites and creams. It's September, so that, hence I don't normally do whites for um, September. So, oh, another excuse to do a bit more shopping, isn't it? A few more white dahlias. Um, okay, so that's, uh, so now number three is annual phlox. Oh, wow. Again, it's not particularly easy and it is a bit of a slug um, banquet as well. So if you put them out, I like to get stuff in the garden when it's really small, because if I find, find I do that, it just grows on so much better. If I harden things off as bigger plants, they just don't seem to, they just seem to sulk for a little while. Whereas when they go out smaller, they sulk, but then they just go absolutely crazy. You can't do that very easily with the flocks because the slugs just keep eating it. Um, you do have to pinch it out and then pinch it out again and pinch it out again and pinch it out again. And then as long as you do that, it will reward you with fantastic long stems. It can be a bit um, floppy. It, it, you do need to think about staking it. Um, but the colour varieties you can have in the annual is amazing. Last year I grew the very popular creme brulee. Um, and um, cherry caramel. They, they were the ones which I knew had a lot of um, pictures of them on Instagram and Pinterest and things like that. Um, I wasn't disappointed. And this year I'm going to also try um, flocks of sheep and um, tapestry. And I'm actually going to give over one whole low tunnel to flocks this year, um, but not under plastic. They'll be grown under EnviroMesh. And that's because last year I grew um, one area under EnviroMesh in the low tunnel and then one area just in the garden in the bed and the ones in the low tunnel just were twice as good. So that's why I'm going to do that again this year. Um, and then something I grew for the first time last year, and forgive me if I, my pronunciation of these things isn't great, um, Lavatera or Lavatra. Um, I grew it for the first time. The only thing I didn't like was the colour I had, which was silver cut, which was actually quite a hot pink didn't really fit my style um, but the actual plant was brilliant because it was quite early um, and I've always ended up using um, calendula early because it's a round flower but calendula is what I call a dirty water flower and it just makes the stems go slimy and it can make everything go over quite quickly whereas the lavatra, um, lavatera, however you say, its vase life was much much better it had that round shape so it could work well as a focal, but in fact, it was also multi-flowered, so it was almost a focal, focal and a filler. Um, but I do need to find a better colour. I thought I found one and I ordered it and then I saw in brackets, now I've got it, it says dwarf. Um, so I may, I'll try it. Um, I may have to buy another packet of seeds. I can't believe I'm saying that. You don't want to know how many packets of seeds I bought. So anyway, first time growing it last year, loved it, definitely going to grow that again. Um, Nigella, um, if I had to choose, th these are what I call sort of, they're the accompaniment of your focal, so generally a smaller round headed flower. And you know, corn flowers are great. I love them in a vase in my house, and I will probably pop some in the cottage flat, cottage garden, but God, they're a pain for cutting for retail bouquets. And events and things they're a real nuisance i much prefer nigella um, a lot to do with the nigella that's my favorite is albion black pod 
which is a white nigella um, and it has these beautiful black pods which i you know i use them a lot at christmas um, and in the autumn as well once i've dried them um, but i'm also going to grow uh, miss jika i haven't grown that one before because i think that's a white blue and a pink and then i'll grow some others that i grew last year again which were midnight and delf blue um, because i really like them um, so definitely nigella and again really that's a really easy one for self-sewing um, self-sewing and direct sewing was what i meant to say but both work just as well in fact i've got quite a lot of i haven't checked it actually we're going for a real cold spell we've had a lot of frost i haven't checked it but i had quite a lot of self-sewn nigella out in the cut flower patch um and then umbellifer <laughs> I said it wasn't Ami. I love dill, I do, but the yellow doesn't always work for me. But it it was a very close second for choosing my umbellifer. But I went with wild carrot, Dara, Dorcas, and I think the reason I went with it is because you've got more variety of colour. So, you know, dill only comes in one colour, um, or layer only comes in one colour. Whereas the Dorcas, you have got these different shades of sort of reds and pinks through to white. Um, so that's why it won. And also, it is hardier, okay? So if you autumn sow um, Ami, it ain't going to like a hard frost. If you've autumn sown Dorcas, it'll be all right. It'll go through. So again, it makes it a little bit easier. Um, so that's why it got onto my top 10. And then we need to talk about some spikes. Now, this was hard because, you know, I was like, Snapdragon, Snapdragon, Snapdragon. I haven't put Snapdragon on there. And that is because I needed something that was more multi-purpose. So I've chosen two spikes, neither of which, are, or spires, whatever you want to call them, spikes, spires, neither of which are a Snapdragon, which I know that sounds shocking to me. I'll tell you why. The two that I've chosen dry, okay? I mean, I don't know if you can dry snapdragons. I, I shouldn't have thought so. They're too fleshy. Um, if, if anyone has, I'd love to know, because then maybe next year I will change my mind. But anyway, I, I've, I've gone for Larkspur, um, because again, it dries really well, lots of different colors. Um, yes, it's a bit fussy to start, but once you've got it started, um, you're there. Um, and then the other one I went for, um, Molicella Levis, I'm not sure if that's pronounced right, but Bells of Ireland. Um, last year, they weren't great for me. The year before, they were absolutely amazing. I've still put them on there because I'm sure it was my fault. And yes, they can be a bit fussy to start. But honestly, if you, after a couple of weeks, if they haven't germinated, put your hand in the tray and ruffle it around. <laughs> hey, presto. Um, the other thing you can do is you can start them in the dark in a um, plastic bag or a tub on a bit of damp kitchen towel and then put them onto compost. So they're, they're a bit fussy, um, but they're worth it. I mean, dried, they are fantastic and you can get some fantastic stem length. But also they can act as another green. You know, I've got the Greek crest, but it's nice to add a bit more green in there as well. So that's how they made it in there. Um, and then this one scabious is in there just because again there are a multitude of varieties so um, i'm going to grow the one for the first time this year which is the sort of the little ping pong one i'll write the the latin down and that's i'm just going to be doing that for dried um, but i also like the um, seed heads of um, all the other scabious again for dried flower work but for me, the scabious, I suppose, is sort of giving that airy, bouncy element that I'm losing with not choosing Cosmos. Um, because the nigella is a bit more rigid. I still needed something that would be a bit airier. Um, so it wasn't a, t a bit too much. Uh, my flowers wouldn't be too much um, petrol station forecourt, if you know what I mean. They needed a bit of whimsy. Um, and then... The last, the tenth one, um, is Feverfoo. I'll write the Latin up, um, so you don't have to listen to me pronounce it. Now, I'm not the biggest fan of the really common Feverfoo, although I grow loads of it and I do use loads of it. It's not entirely to my taste because sometimes it can be a bit heavy, but you can 
The same as with sedum, you can cut a few bracts out to make it a bit area. But I tell you what, I really like some of the much whiter versions of the feverfew. Um, and I've, in fact, this year, for the first time, I've, I've got them on the table there. I, I sowed them last year. I sowed the snowball variety. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how I get on with that. But they self-sow for me. Um, so I get um, the, the normal fever few and I also get the one which has got a lot more white on it. It's almost double. It's almost a, a double fever few. Um, and that is a perennial. It will self-seed seed, and you can direct sow it. But if you have um, immature plants um, that you put out in the spring, they'll give you flowers at the later end of the year. And then if you've got flowers you've overwintered from the previous year, they'll give you your earlier flowers. So it is possible to have um, fever fruit at both the start and the end of the year. Um, Okay, there we are. That was my that was my top ten. I will write the top ten on the screen now, um, so you can take a minute just to look at it. It was really hard, um, but I and I did have to really justify my reasons for why Cosmos, Ami, Snapdragons, and Sunflowers weren't on there. But they didn't. They they're not on there. They <laughs> if I if I only could grow ten things, they would not be ten things that I would grow. But I'm growing more than 10 things, so I am growing all of those things. Um, but as I say, if you have got a really small space, and again, it's more sensible to budget like that because I end up spending far more on seeds. I mean, I, for example, I've got a seed packet of Larkspur seeds. It's got a thousand seeds in it. I'm not going to grow a thousand seeds. Um, so if you can stick to 10 varieties, you save yourself money. Um, it, it, it's easier to plan the garden because then you can um, uh, have different stages of growth. You can you have a bed of snapdragon you plant in the autumn and then one you plant in the spring and then midsummer, so on. It's just easier to run your garden, whereas my garden is a chaotic mess of far too many things. And I definitely... I say it every year, but I really do need to wind it down. Um, I need to work out really, am I going to do events or am I going to do retail? And I think if you've got a large space, you can do both easily. But I think if you've got a small space, you either have to use your retail flowers for any events you do and just live with it. Or you end up having to grow too much stuff. Um, but anyway, I, as you know, I'm, I'm still learning. I mean, I started selling cut flowers in 2021. I'd been growing them before that. I didn't just start growing them and start selling them. I'd been growing them and, and playing around with them and doing a few courses and things. But I started selling them in 2021. Um, so this will be my fourth year selling. Um, so I'm still still trying to establish a, a brand, a style um, and a name for myself in the local area. Um, and that's why I'm still trying new things, still growing new varieties, still watching other YouTubers and going, oh, that looks good. I'll grow that. Um, this is one of those videos which is do as I say and not as I do. But you'll do what you want anyway, just like I do. Anyway, I'm sorry you haven't had a video for a day or two. Um, I realised I'd done 12 months of filming and I had about 60 odd videos on there, which you know is the equivalent of more than one a week. And I just needed a little bit of a break from it. I'm actually looking at improving my filming setup a little bit. I didn't want to do that because as you know, I don't make any money from YouTube yet. I don't have enough subscribers, uh, but I am looking into um, some things that are easier for me to film with um, and perhaps a microphone, things like that. Because I'm still using my broken iPad. For those of you that know, I dropped it filming at some point in the summer and it's still held together with sellotape. Um, and it would just be easier if I've got some better gear. Um, so uh, if I do buy the better gear, I might do a video about that. We've dug two holes for the polytunnel. That's as far as we've got. I'll take you around for a tour of the garden at some point because I have also been quite proactive. The last tour I took you on, it was a dreadful mess. I've done a lot of clearing up um, and you'll be pleased to know the pile of shredding that was in my shed has all been shredded. 
Um, so I'm getting there slowly. Um, and we, we've got some seeds sowing to start. Oh, and the other thing is my bare root trees arrived today. And although it's the ground, it doesn't look frozen on top. It's still almost, it hasn't thawed right out down deep. So I'm just going to quickly heal those in just to a wheelbarrow of compost. Um, and then hopefully plant those tomorrow. Um, and I've also got lots of willow whips that I want to plant as well. So hopefully we'll get those in the ground. So lots to do. Um, sorry for rambling again. Um, thanks very much for watching. Um, and I'll see you in the next video.